Rancangan Kejaya kali ini akan membawa anda semua meneroka satu kejaya dalam bidang pembinaan iaitu arkitek. Untuk mengetahui dengan lebih lanjut lagi tentang kejaya tersebut, kita akan menemubual seorang arkitek berpengalaman yang telah berkecimpung dalam kejaya ini selama lebih dari 20 tahun. broadly classified under four main stages of work. Uh, schematic design, design development, contract documentation and contract implementation. Under schematic design, we start by working out a concept, a theme, and that theme will dictate every design decision that we make thereafter. We will generate the uh, the, the floor plan as well as the general form of the building. Um, we have to take into consideration our uh, the user's requirement, and um, then we will work out the planning issues like density and so forth. Once we arrive at the plan as well as the general form, we will prepare the plans and we will submit it to the planning authorities in order to get approval. Uh, this is the schematic stage. Once we get the planning approval, then we can move on to the next stage, which is the design development stage. Here, we will look into the design of the building at uh, greater detail. Uh, we will study how the various elements are put together. We will work out the uh, sizes, the uh, door and window sizes. We will select the materials and finishes and we will also prepare the full set of building plans that will reflect how the building is going to look like at a more detailed level. Once the, the building plans have been completed, we will then submit it to the, the relevant authorities. At this point, we also coordinate with other consultants to, uh, to enable them to proceed with submission to the relevant authorities. Um, once we get all the required approvals, then we are ready to start our building work. But uh, before we actually start work at site, we have to uh, go through the contract documentation stage where we prepare the specifications and detailed drawings and uh, we call uh, tender from a, a panel of contractors. We will after, after the, we receive the various tenders from the contractors, we will um, normally call interviews of the shortlisted contractors. Um, thereafter, we submit a tender report to our client and make our recommendation. Once the contractor has been selected, then the construction can start at site. Thereafter, uh, this is the contract implementation stage. The duties of an architect is to supervise the work and certifies the progress of the work done in order to enable the contractor to collect the money. Um, we will also coordinate with the other consultants regarding the relevant parts of work to make sure that everything is integrated. So um, our duties actually is, is quite broad. It range from at the outset of a project, we advise our clients on the feasibility of the project then we get involved in the design, the conceptualization of the project. We develop the design, we put a flash to the building. Then we are also involved um, uh, quite often in, in, the market, in, in, the, in the formalization of the marketing strategy of a developer. Then we have to coordinate with the various government departments to make sure that we get all the required approvals and sometimes this is a rather tedious process. Thereafter then we have to look at we have to look after the project when it's under construction.
So our involvement normally stretches uh, from any time from one year uh, in, the, in the case of a bungalow project, a simple project, to years, you know, maybe four to five years with a normal housing project, for instance. I would say there's a lot of variety in what we do. Every project is a different project. It has its own character and uh, it is a new opportunity for us to implement our ideas and not just to experiment on paper but to actually see the building being built and turn into a reality. Every client is also different. They have different personalities and the way we approach them is, will have to be different. So we get to meet uh, clients from all walks of life. Yeah? The, they might be lawyers or they might be um, uh, what you call a corporate person and, um, and their needs are very different so we have to learn how to understand them and to translate their needs, their requirements into three-dimensional form. Um, a constant challenge is um, in in upgrading the standard of design that we see currently. Every new project that I undertake, uh, I strive to uh, achieve a design standard which is higher than what you see in the surrounding in order that it can set a standard for others to follow. If um, also most clients will tell us that uh, they want us to design a good building for us but their budget is limited. So we strive to create more with less. We try to achieve high quality design by using relatively economical materials. We also, another uh, challenge that I face constantly is to convince our clients in the value of our services. Most clients will tell us or they believe that they are overpaying us but we always believe that we are being underpaid. So the challenge is to prove to them that whatever service that we provide them actually adds a lot of value to their project and um, whatever fees that they pay us is actually more than compensated by the value added premium. A lot of developers that what is important is better so we face competition from architects from other countries who come here to practice um, we can learn from them no doubt but um, there are a lot of work that we believe we can do better uh, if not equal but maybe even better than them so we have to struggle to um, overturn this mindset. Other competitions that we face also come from other professions uh, such as town planners as well as quantity surveyors for instance. Um, in an, with a number of local authorities they require planning submissions to be made by a town planner. Um, it used to be the, the architect can make uh, that kind of submission as long as it is not more than 50 acres. Uh, the uh, professionals such as project managers also um, are starting to make inroads into our profession claiming that they can manage a project, they can supervise the project better. So we are constantly faced with the challenge and, and the need to upgrade our skills through continuing professional development courses as well as attending seminars and so forth in order to keep ourselves abreast on the latest uh, competition and challenges. We got to keep on upgrading ourselves with IT in order to keep ourselves abreast with the latest technological development as well. 
the latest materials that are in the market and so forth. We believe that we have a strong social responsibility to enhance the quality of our environment. Architecture is a reflection of the way we live, our lifestyle. So if we create good architecture, we can enhance that lifestyle as opposed to building an, uh, doing an ugly building. Whatever we do stands for all to look at. They will compliment it or they will curse it. So it depends on which you, you wish on your buildings. Um, we also believe that we have a role to play in nation building. In a rapidly developing country like Malaysia, there's a strong demand for housing and uh, commercial properties and industrial properties. But we must be careful in order not to turn our cities into urban slums. Um, you will need to undergo... There are two parts of the architectural training. There's the academic part of it and there's the professional part of it. In the academic training, you are required to undergo tertiary education in a recognized university. To qualify entry, entry into a tertiary uh, institution, you've got to have relatively good grades in either arts or science subjects. You can be from either streams, art stream or science stream. But you must have, you don't necessarily need to have excellent grades, but it must be good grades. Then, once you qualify uh, into a university, uh, normally most architectural courses is a double degree. You undergo an undergraduate course and a postgraduate course, which can be, uh, which can stretch anything from four to five years, depending on the particular university. After you complete your academic education, we have to serve uh, under a recognized uh, architectural firm, uh, under a kind of a mentor-pupil system. We have to acquire the required skills as a professional. Um, we have to acquire the experience, on-site experience, as well as working knowledge of building regulations. Uh, the required duration of working is uh, two years after which then you will have to qualify to sit for our part three professional exam, which is both written and oral. Once you get through our part three exam, then you can qualify yourself to be called a full-fledged full architect. Kerjaya kali ini akan memaparkan satu lagi kerjaya dalam bidang pembinaan iaitu juru ukur bahan. Apakah sebenarnya kerjaya sebagai juru ukur bahan? Saya akan bawa anda semua melihat kerjaya ini dengan lebih dekat lagi. Okey, bidang Tugas seorang juru bahan ni um, secara amnya um, adalah um, membuat satu anggaran kos kepada pihak klien untuk satu projek binaan sebelum projek tersebut dilaksanakan. So kalau klien tu bersetuju dengan anggaran kos tu maka projek tu akan dijalankan. Selain itu dia juga um, menasihatkan pihak klien lah tentang apa ni belanjawan. Uh, projek yang bakal dibina atau uh, oleh apa ni dari reka bentuk reka bentuk yang dihasilkan oleh uh, profesion lain lah so selepas tu dia akan membuat dokumen tender laporan tender dan pengusuran kepada pihak klien dan seterusnya itu dinamakan uh, peringkat pra kontrak lah atau pra tender dan kemudian dia akan pergi kepada peringkat uh, pasca kontrak ataupun selepas tender lah eh. di mana um, projek yang akan dibina ataupun sedang dibina tu akan dibuat penilaian oleh pihak juru kubahan hmm. untuk menilai kerja-kerja progres kerja tersebut uh, di mana bayaran um, 
kalau kita katakan interim lah bayaran bulanan dibayar kepada kontraktor uh, kita syurkan seorang juku bahan akan syurkan bayaran tersebut dibayar kepada pihak kontraktor secara progresif maknanya uh, berapa banyak kontraktor dah buat ok kita nilai untuk tempoh satu bulan dan kita bayar kepada kita syurkan kepada klien so klien akan uh, atas bila percaya dia akan sama ada uh, apa ni Uh, menggunakan penilaian seorang juku bahan dan membayar kepada pihak kontraktor lah. Selain itu juga ia akan buat uh, apa ni uh, menasihat kepada klien tentang apa-apa permasalahan kontrak pembinaan dan seterusnya akan buat penutupan uh, akaun mutamad. Itu juga disebut lah. Menarik, ok. Dikatakan menarik, um, boleh dikatakan satu profesion di mana seorang yuk bahan tu akan pelajari, bukan mendalam lah, ekspek arkitektur. Dia akan tahu ekspek uh, kejutan awam, kejutan struktur dan juga kejutan mekanikal dan elektrikal. Uh, juga ada juga sikit input uh, untuk uh, apa ni, um, land surveying uh, and then um, bila you tahu benda-benda tu maknanya you akan peka tentang persekitaran, macam mana benda ni dibuat macam mana je ni kat situ lah menariknya lah uh, bidang juruku bahan ni kabarannya biasa semua profesion pun kita juga kena apa ni um, menepati masa time limit yang diberi sometimes dia bagi you satu hari untuk buat laporan sometimes dia bagi pagi petang you nak that is cabaran lah one thing sometimes you kena dapat dalam masa yang constraint to get a very almost accurate information to provide to the client dan lagi satu is um, um, Sometimes uh, cabaran yang uh, lain ialah uh, perspeksi profesion lain terhadap jurukubahan ni lah. Macam because jurukubahan ni biasa di create selepas profesion lain. Arkitek, engineer, dah groom, mereka dah establish tau. Then only the QS come. So it's very difficult for them to accept QS ni punya input. But we try very hard to prove certain things lah. Okay, on QSP profession, why why is the QS uh, required in that future, in the existence of uh, penuh di rukubah hari ini? Persaingan yang saya mention di sana, di profession lain, dia, dia tak berapa bersetuju lah dengan profession di rukubah hari ini. Um, Then even now, nowadays, uh, sekarang ni eh, dia yang apa ni perisian-perisian komputer yang canggih-canggih dia mula nak take over tapi it's only part of the sebahagian daripada ni lah kerjaya jurukubahan ni uh, contohnya kerja-kerja pengukuran pengukuran kerja ni, ok perisian komputer sekarang uh, dia hampir boleh boleh mem, apa ni Me, apa ni, mengeluarkan kuantiti-kuantiti eh, pengukuran tu contohnya uh, arkitek punya software eh, you can just um, you boleh ambil scan je scan daripada drawing dia, dia orang boleh ambil area ke uh, to the extent lah so um, dekat situ mungkin mungkin pengurangan lah pengurangan skop kerja jurukuh bahan ni mungkin lah uh, in future akan dikecilkan lah Bagaimana yang I terangkan awal kan, dia membuat anggaran kos supaya satu projek tu dibelanjakan. Saya belanjakan satu uh, apa ni, perbelanjaan yang apa ni, ekonomi bers- uh, bersesuaian dengan projek yang dikendaki. Jadi tiada pembaziran. Jadi uh, profesion jurukubahan ni, uh, apa ni ditanggungjawabkan, dipertanggungjawabkan supaya uh, 
uh, tiada pembaziran ataupun pembaziran mungkin dapat dikurangkan, diminimalkan kos dia. Kan? Lakukan untuk menjadi seorang juru kebahan yang pertama lulus di Pejabat Malaysia uh, dengan mendapat kredit dalam matematik dan bahasa Malaysia atau bahasa Inggeris. Uh, kemudian lulus ijazah sarjana muda ukubahan daripada universiti yang diiktiraf oleh lembaga jurukubahan. Dan seterusnya untuk mendapat menjadi seorang jurukubahan berdaftar, uh, seseorang um, lepas yang ijazah jurukubahan uh, perlu membuat apa ni um, Uh, menduduki beberapa perusahaan untuk melayakkan dirinya uh, perusahaan tersebut kena lulus lah keputusan dia kena lulus untuk melayakkan diri uh, di tiraf sebagai jurus kubahan berdasar Semoga anda dapat mempelajari kejaya sebagai seorang arkitek menerusi paparan sebentar tadi Pastinya ia dapat membantu anda memilih bidang kejaya yang anda minati